This is a very English UK style uh, media story, but I'm not sure if some of you guys know who Noel Clark is, but Noel Clark was um, unfortunately for him anyway accused of being a sexual predator, as you can see on the screen one year ago. Yeah, because it's the Guardian, and um, the accusations I thought were pretty damning at the time. Again, you know, no one's you know innocent to prove you guilty without malarkey. But when the accusations came out, they sounded pretty you know pretty believable. And all intents and purposes. So let's just quickly um, scroll down to kind of give us a, a fresher. But he's basically sat down with ZT Mills to have a conversation about his allegations and how he's trying to rebuild his life and whatnot. I just went to kind of go over what the actual initial allegations were. So 20 women had accused him of groping, some element of groping, harassment, and bullying, right? And this is an article from The Garden, I think I spoke about at the time, um, that kind of says it. Let's go over some of the allegations here. Um, they allege that Clark is a serial abuser and of women using his power in the industry to prey on and harass female colleagues and sometimes bully those who fall out of favour. Um, he continues here, says the Guardian has spoken to 20 women, all of whom knew Clark in a professional capacity. They um, they very they reverently accuse him of sexual harassment, unwanted sexual so i want to touching or groping sexual inappropriate behavior comments on set professional misconduct taking and sharing sexual especially pictures and videos without consent and bullying that's a lot of fucking charges in it fucking hell and um, clark said in a statement in 20 year career i've been put i put inclusivity and diversity at the forefront of my work and never had a complaint made against me if anyone has worked with me um has ever felt uncomfortable or disrespected i sincerely apologize i vehemently deny any sexual misconduct or wrongdoing and in to defend myself against these false allegations through his lawyers clark categorically denied every allegation that the guardian put to him bar one except that he had made an inappropriate comments about one woman for she later apologized but denying the rest of her complaints um in 29 page letter his lawyer said that he categorically denies all the allegations from 20 women in those cases questioning his credibility when you get accused by 20 people this is the thing i'm wondering about this sort of stuff right because even if you're innocent yeah, for the unfortunate nature of the society we live in at the moment that even if you are innocent this stain remains on your jacket forever there's no way you can kind of remove this unless you do like a, a justin bieber right when justin bieber got accused by those two fans i think that were kind of stalkers i think he essentially had a whole paper trail of interactions with these people because i guess maybe someone on his team maybe himself had a bad feeling that these girls would eventually turn around and accuse him of some nonsense but he was able to lay out entirely the timeline of knowing these people from day one to whenever um and he basically was able to refute all their claims of what happened right justin Bieber had this issue i think it happened a few years ago if you remember if you remember right but anybody else i think if you're not Justin Bieber. um it's very difficult to be able to fight these sort of allegations and kind of prove them to be not true especially if there's like 20 different people saying this 20 different men women is like a lot of allegations one or two fair enough um especially if the person's like a party person you're like stuff can happen when you're drunk and you're high but 20 people is a lot of people 20 people is a lot of people like it's just hard like to believe that that's not true um BAFTA confirmed in a statement later um following that 29th March of announcement that it planned to give Clark the award of course that was controversial at the time let's continue yes yeah, so let's say um it says here how his influence was um yeah this, this is the one of the first ones right um only this week Clark has been uh, so Gina Powell Worked with Clark as a producer between September 2014 and March 2017, producing Brotherhood. She told The Guardian that Clark would constantly harass her. <laughs> Honestly, this is so damning. I don't know how you can deny this sort of shit. This is just too much. But anyway, constantly harass her. And on one occasion, telling her that when he hired her, he'd plan to fuck her and fire her before deciding to keep her on. Now, even if this, this, the issue I have with this stuff, again, which no Clark has to just be like, just own up to your mistakes and try to do better but this constant lying is just a bit too much because legitimately i think he's lying he says he does it, he's not true i think the guy's lying i just have to say this because in my opinion saying this to somebody in a work environment i wanted to fuck you and then hire you is already grounds for 
um, what's that thing called? Misconduct. That's already grounds for having some sort of disciplinary action taken against you. Maybe because he's a producer and he's a high profile person, not going to happen. But that's already a bad thing. That's already something that somebody could say is a form of harassment. That could be something that could be enough for you to have your whole career go down the pan. This is enough. This comment, let alone, I didn't touch them. It wasn't this, it wasn't that. No, just this comment alone is enough to get you in big, big trouble. Um, it continues. Um, she also alleges that Clark would brag about storing sexually explicit pictures and videos on his hard drive, including footage of her he has secretly filmed during naked auditions. Yo. Even if he had these pictures and they cons and she consented to him taking them when they were going out together, which is already a, I think, you know, the lines and the abuse of power and all this sort of stuff is murky, especially in the workplace. I just think it happens all the time, especially in England. You know, people work work way too much, especially in offices. You're working sometimes eight hours a day with people. It's natural that sometimes if you're in the same space with some people, you're going to end up kind of falling in love or maybe feeling some feelings for some people and stuff happens. It's unavoidable. But if you can avoid them, you, you should because when it gets messy, there's no unmessing it. Like that's the issue with workplace stuff. It's hard to really kind of, you know, dial that shit back in. But God almighty, even if they're going out, having this secretly recorded naked footage of people is wild it continues and that, is that her no that's somebody else that's a jana was that johanna james anyway it continues powell says clark um once showed her secretly recorded video of why of such audition of jana oh my god he's showing naked audition clips of other actors to other actors is this to kind of get them and anyway, the way boys brains work in it men's brains work really weird what in the hell does he think showing other women other images of them naked will do to other women he thinks it's going to get them interested <sighs> anyway pal told four people about clark's alleged secret filming all of whom confirmed this conversation with the guardian they included james her friend who she told about the incident in the winter of 2017 in a pub in south london the naked audition had taken place more than four years previously for a film legacy in naked auditions honestly being an actor is long fucking hell pal was able to describe the exact haircut james had had at the time and her hair is usually long and blonde but after a hair, hair disaster she had cropped it short um james recalls clark had talked her into auditioning for the role she she had been hesitant she was only 23 and fresh out of drama school but clark persuaded her explaining that the naked audition wouldn't be filmed oh my god an email from her agent confirmed this agreement so there's emails that the agent has in their inbox to this day that says Clark emailed, no Clark there, saying, hey, no, so they're denying, ugh, this guy's denying stuff that's a category. Anyway, I was told 100% it was not going to be on camera, James says, as she understood it, the naked audition was purely to check that she could do the scene and wasn't going to bottle it. Um, the audition was mortifying James recalls and afterwards she pulled out of the running of the role she didn't want one of her first acting jobs to be nude very smart the Guardian spoke to two of her friends of power and James who were also present in the pub that said then recall the emotional exchange I was so upset James recalls now years later I still cry when I talk about it yo Clark denies ever covertly filming naked auditions or sharing footage with Powell, a casting director who was present at James' audition, said she, there was absolutely no way Clark would be have covertly filmed it, even without her knowledge. He's always been a good guy. So a casting director who doesn't want to be named said that. Okay, cool. Anyway, you get the gist, right? Loads of accusations against him. So he recently sat down with ZZ Mills to basically plead his case in an effort to kind of get back in the good graces of people and try to persuade the court of public opinion that he's not a creep and not a freak. So let's see some of the interview and see what he has to say. But 20 people, 20 women is a lot. 20 is a lot. 20 is a fucking lot. Um, so let's play the video interview and see what he has to say. <laughs> Z 
ZZ Moore show. I haven't been here for a while. Actually, we're on a new set today. This is the, this is the new look for the ZZ Moore show. Um, and today I am for, I'll probably from them. It could happen. Why this happened? Well, yeah, two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago. And basically what happened was there was a article written by The Guardian mm -hmm. where it said that 20 women mm -hmm. had come forward. <laughs> To say that you two zero. accused of groping, mm -hmm. uh, sexual harassment, mm -hmm. inappropriate behavior. Yeah. No, I, I haven't heard what he said about Schultz. I'll check it later. I've never heard of it. Well, what do you say? Let me know in the chat. Um, and these women came forward to speak to the, uh, the Guardian. And from there, you basically lost everything. Yeah. Now, <laughs> my thing is, which I think everyone thinks is i think sometimes if it's like one or two people can be like mm, dismiss it yeah. that's a bit maybe sometimes even three four you might be like yeah. okay maybe but 20 is a lot of women yeah. to come forward mm -hmm. and to all kind of have the same kind of story or the well, same, they're, well they're not all the same story. well in the same group as in like inappropriate behavior mm -hmm. the groping whatever mm -hmm. it's all to do with basically you not carrying yourself in the correct way in, they, a, certain they, they, in a certain yeah. manner that they didn't yeah. like so 20 women mm -hmm. do you understand why it's hard for people to be like how can 20 women all be lying of course yeah I've, i understand completely how people can can see that and i've never i've never turned around and said 20 people were lying the reason i denied everything is because i think a lot of them are lying or i know a lot of them are lying and then there's a lot of things that are I think a lot of them are lying. Out of context, there's a lot of things that were conversations that people were involved with and are now acting like they weren't involved in those conversations. There's a lot of situations that were, I say, mutual, what's the, the, the filthy word we can't say now, mutual banter or jokes, and now people are acting like they weren't. So I'm not gonna turn around and say, well, yeah, I've done this and done that if I've not done it. It would be easier for me to sit here and cry as easy mm -hmm. and be like, I did all these things, I'm, I'm repenting, I'm sorry, I've worked on myself. And you know what? I have worked on myself. I have worked on myself because... Hey, I'm only, I'm only four minutes in, but this guy's giving me sicko vibes, man. This is some nutcase thing. J just to put myself into his shoes, I'm only four minutes in, I'm going to be pausing this a lot. But I don't understand the need, like... Maybe it's because I haven't done this, but I guess if you're a scumbag, right, and you get no, if you're a creep and you get exposed, there has to be an element of shame. Like, you have to be an element of like embarrassment, shame, maybe some regret, remorse. No, more so because you got caught. You just pissed. You got caught, right? Because you're a creep. You know what you're doing. Cool. So now everyone knows what you are. Surely there's a point of you that's like, you know what? I'm just going to use this, use this as an excuse to just like duck out and kind of live a life of like, you know, just live a life of, um, just kind of live a life under the radar. You would assume so. But I'm interested to know what's that about people that do creep shit that also want to get out in front of it and try and fight against these allegations and make everyone out to be the crazy one and all that sort of stuff and be unbothered like this kind of unbothered act that he's doing it's just really odd very odd this kind of need because you would imagine if you do some creep shit that part of you feels like your day of reckoning is always going to come around the corner there's no way you can think that you're going to get away forever surely not or maybe there is maybe there is maybe that's what i'm not understanding maybe there is a part of you think you know what i'm going to get away this until the end of time but yeah, this he's already giving me sicker vibes, I'm not gonna lie. I wanna give you the benefit of the doubt, no Clark, but you're already giving me yucky vibes, brother. Cause at the end of the day, when those things sort of come out, you have to look at you have to look at yourself and go, Right, was I was I making people feel like that? Boy, I didn't know. I need to go work on myself. So I have worked on myself. <laughs> of course, if I didn't look like me, I could have worked on myself for a month in the priory and I'd have been back on television already. But when you look like me, it's a little bit of a different story. What? So two years later, here I am. But I've worked on myself, but the Who's the last white person who got accused by 20 women of sexual assault and they're back on TV after a month? Please, quickly, name the person. Point is, that was making, it's like, I can't just sit here and be like, yes, this happened and that happened. If it didn't happen, it would be easier for me to just cry and say it happened. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. So do you feel though, 
that. Is that, is that is that like a way of emotional gaslighting? Why does he keep saying, I'm not going to cry? It means me to cry. Why does he keep saying that for? Maybe you should cry, bro. If you want your career back, maybe you should be crying. <laughs> I don't know. Those allegations are pretty, a lot, like, you know, there's a lot of uh, journalistic, what do you call it? Called, um, I forgot the word of it. Standards that went into corroborating a lot of those stories. They interviewed friends of friends that were saying, yeah, she said this thing to me in 2017. This person, that, that person, this, like, what evidence does he have? Does he just have trust me? Trust me for evidence. You did anything wrong. Do you feel like at any point your behaviour was a little bit questionable for those women to come forward and say, this is how I felt? Because in my opinion, and I've said this before, I, when it all came out, I, I, had a, I had a live show actually that week, right? Mm. And I said, 20 women is a lot, so yeah. there must be some truth in it. Yeah. There has, there's no smoke, you know, there's no smoke without fire. What if there's no fire though? But there has to be some, like, in my opinion, like... What if there's no fire? What's that like mean? The way I carry myself. But then again, again, someone could say that it's inappropriate. But then I would look at myself and be like, oh, maybe when I said this to her, it made her feel uncomfortable. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Do you feel like when you've looked back, when you look back, is there anything where you think, actually, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe that was a little bit... I put my hands up. I think there's moments... I think there's moments where... I can look back and say, well, you know what? Maybe I spoke a bit harsh. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I spoke a bit harsh. Or what? maybe I shouldn't have been involved in that joke. I shouldn't have been involved in those conversations. But not in the way that it was painted. Not in that predatory, she like, I'm after women, I'm doing all this kind of... That's just not me. I'm not, I'm not even... I'm She's trying to guide him into the right answer, but he's just not having it. He's just calling it banter. Like, what is this? Is he going to say, like... um? Locker room banter. This is a pretty mad thing to. I want to use as a screen grab. Actually, this might be a good screen grab for the thumbnail when I eventually cook this up. But yeah, that's she's trying to help him out, but he's not having it. I'm not even like I don't go out. I wasn't even in terms of the the people I know and the actors or actresses and stuff that I know. I wouldn't even make the top hundred. Like I'm not even I'm not even a, 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 a batty grabber. I wasn't even one of those guys to to be called a groper like baffled my head because I wasn't even one of those guys that would hug girls and like touch their bum or anything like that. I wasn't even doing that. So for, for this to really hit me like that, it was That's like, a weird defence. <laughs> well, hold on a second. And seeing it, seeing it and being able to go... Let's not lie. He looks like the, where's my hug? Where's my hug? You know, he looks like the kind of where's my hug kind of guy, doesn't he? Where's my hug at? He definitely looks like that kind of guy. Well, hold on. I know that didn't happen. And I, that, well, hold on. That wasn't like that. But you can't talk. When they do this to you, you can't talk, right? So in answer to your question, yes, there are conversations that I've been involved with and jokes that I was involved with and, and chats that I was involved with that would cross the line of inappropriateness. But I was involved in those conversations. I wasn't instigating. I wasn't sort of taking it to the point where everybody else was like, oh, why are you doing that? Do you know what I mean? I thought I was just doing what everybody else was doing. Not because I'm a sheep. I'm so hold on, you're not a batty grabber, but then you also take part in conversations that people would deem to be, what, like sexual in nature? Like, how's that, how's that possible? Any guy that I've, or any guy that anyone has worked with, especially especially if you worked on dodgy places that I've been in, the type of guy that's usually involved in the kind of, you know, sexual innuendo jokes is usually the batty grabber. It's usually the where's my grab, where's my hug at type of guy, usually. It's very, very seldom have I seen the split between the sexual innuendo guy and the, you know, handsy guy. They're usually the same person. I'm not. And in terms of talking, because not, not all of this is even sexual. Some of it's, half of it is, yeah, is bullying, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of that stuff as well, I can, I'm a very, I'm a very straightforward person. So I, if I can look back and say, you know what, there's moments where I've probably spoke to people that in a way that people might find a bit too harsh. I can go, yeah, maybe. But you know, when you are, when you're under pressure and everything is on your shoulders and if anything goes wrong on, 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 on this, this project or this thing, or no one's looking at anybody else, it's looking at you. Sometimes you want things done the way you want them done and you want them done when you want them done. And that can come across at times as intimidating or that can come across at times as why is he talking to a man like that do you think you're do you think you're likable no and i think 
unfortunately, that has probably played a part 100%. into the way people see you. Because I would say whenever I've kind of seen you out, I don't... I, well, I when don't, have, I don't, when look, have you seen me out? I've seen you out en enough. Not, I haven't seen you out bare, but I've seen you out a few times. And I would say you're, you're not... I challenge that. Well... <laughs> if you haven't been arrested already, maybe shut up. Yeah, exactly, Jihad. Thank you for the one ninety nine super chat. Like again, we're having to get into the mind of scumbags. And if you're not a scumbag, if you're not a creep, and you're not an abuser, you're not a rapist or a diddler, it's hard to put yourself in the f in the shoes of one. But I just in this day in in this day in this day and age, right, where essentially it's impossible to get cancelled unless you work for the man. Like unless you, and maybe that's why he's doing this because if you're an actor actor with a capital a and a director and stuff you don't really have your own thing you're kind of always using other people's money to create stuff so you kind of always have to be in the good grace of the industry to have a career because he doesn't have a podcast doesn't have his own youtube channel doesn't have his own network he's always having to kind of work with people right so maybe this is why he's fighting for his life here but i feel like in this day and age if you can cultivate your own fan base you essentially make yourself immune to cancellation apart from criminal consequences. So if you get, if people in the court with public opinion judge you to be a creep and an harasser, you can kind of get away with it. If you just kind of, it's kind of sick to say that, but you can get away with it if you just kind of just give your fans what they want. So you'd have to kind of prove yourself or prove your innocence. Same with, um, you know, what's going on with Crystal Lee at the moment. He's been accused of what he's been accused of, but he hasn't really been trying to convince anybody outside of his fan base that he's a good guy. Because, you know, why he, why would you have to? Because your fans still fuck with you, isn't it? Just contrary. And if you are a creep, you kind of ignore it. But maybe that's, maybe that just explains already why he's doing this. Because it's, I just can't get in my head why you'd want to do this. Because he's making stuff look worse. Personally, even this one, he's he's already arguing with the host about how often he's been outside. She's she's basically making an um an anecdotal point that she's seen him out and about and he doesn't come across as the warmest guy and she he's already arguing hey i know i don't go out you haven't seen me so no i've seen you out enough <laughs> what? you can because i don't go out yeah but i've seen you at events i, I know for sure whether it was five ten years ago where i've seen you places you know i saw you out a couple of times and i did say to you but i challenged I, it then as well didn't yeah I? and i did but i still said i never got warmth from you mm -hmm. i don't think you're a warm character and I, to be honest, I don't think you're a warm character. And I think, unfortunately, yeah. that is what has also played a part into people probably be being like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, well, I don't like no. But I I'm agree. able to... I agree with you. I'm able to say, oh, yeah, nah. when I've seen Noah, it hasn't been the warmest for me, but I can take myself out of it and be like, that doesn't mean now that... So all warm people are, are fucking the abusers. Let's, let's relax. Come on now. He is this character but do you think that's what's happened uh, that is a part of it so the things about the bullying and the uh, people probably have read that and be like oh yeah well that was i yeah the vibe i get from i can believe that 100 percent. i'm not i'm not here here's the interesting thing and this is very interesting because people that know me i'm very warm i'm very like this sounds crazy yeah? people at home like ah oh, this guy i'm very warm like if you but i don't let anybody in and so therefore, <laughs> isn't that the opposite of being warm? <laughs> it's like Kawhi Leonard saying, I'm a fun guy. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> For 95% of the people I meet, I am standoffish. I'm not, I didn't, I didn't get into this business. I got into this business to, to work hard and bust my ass and do well. I didn't really come into it to, to make friends. So my mm -hmm. friends are either guys from road when I was young and I wasn't doing that, which I've discussed many times, but I got friends that were, or guys that I met Ooh, in sixth form boy. college that are still my friends today. I didn't really make many friends in the industry. And that's, that's fact. And even, you know, with all due respect, you said you see me out a few times. I kind of challenged that a little bit because I never went out. I, mean, I never like, went I'm out. I'm talking about adult kid oh, days when you have like screenings no, man, and all this those guy. Kind of you Understood. Would, you wouldn't, no, because no, you probably yeah. are like five years old or something well, like that. Well, I, was, well, I, I mean, I can't. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm Who's like, that girl like, in a pram, man? What's she <laughs> doing in there? <laughs> no, but I Where's was, her parents? I was there. I, I Understood. The thing, so, that's so, so, I mean, but, yeah. but, but I, I do, I do agree with that. Like people didn't like me, but you know what? I didn't care. 
because I wasn't, I'm not warm to people. You had to, you had to know me. But if you don't know me, I'm not trying to be your friend. I'm not a big friend. I'm not, I'm not, I was never starstruck. This is another thing. I was never starstruck. I wouldn't see someone and be like, yo, there's so-and-so. And I walked in a room and this is where people go, he's so, he's all, because I, you know, arrogant. Right, yeah, um, yeah. I love it, arrogant. You know what I mean? He's this and that. I was never starstruck by no one. So I'd walk into a room with the biggest movie stars and in my mind, I'm like, sure. Because in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to be there too. <laughs> Isn't that what arrogant is? <laughs> Sounds like when BGL was talking about narcissism. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly, John Balthus. <laughs> Thank you for the two little super chat. Describe, he's saying he's not arrogant. Then he goes on to describe himself and how he acts. And he's basically describing somebody as arrogant. This, this, this associative thing he has going on is fucking wild. But yeah, John Valdez is fucking 100% right. This is giving strong BGL vibes and strong BGL vibes. Right. That's what I want to work to. That's what I want to work towards. I was never rude to anyone. But like, I, when I used to see them fl people around them like flies on shit, I was like, that's not me. Isn't that rude? You, people around famous people are flies on shit. See the famous person, sure. I'm going to be him anyway or her when I'm, when I'm, when I'm popular and famous. And, I, and you know what would happen by the end of the night? At some point, that big star would come and speak, would to, come and speak to me. Because they're thinking to themselves, who the <laughs> fuck is this guy that is not around me? That's how I was. I'm, I'm not a warm person. So in terms of that, I think the, the vitriol and the reactions... I'm not a warm person. I am a warm person. Afterwards, was, I was very disliked. And so people couldn't... And when you're disliked and you keep doing well, <laughs> burns people in a different way. How is it, because your production company that you started yeah. uh, called um, Unstoppable... Uh, huh? Ironic, right? Listen to the name. Unstoppable. <laughs> Unstoppable Film and Television. Yeah. And you started that with your friend, Jason. Mm -hmm. um, tell me how that... Because you've, like I said at the beginning, you've been doing this for 20 years. You've been yeah. building your career. You've mentioned, obviously, that you're a black man. Yes. How has that been... Building oh, that as a black man in a predominantly white space. As a How black that man, for you? and also, if I'm being honest, I can, like again, I can, like I keep saying to people, and I have to keep saying this, I can look at things objectively, yeah. so I can understand why your demeanor would be like this. Because I think sometimes, even as a black woman, you have to have this hard exterior. They'll step on because you. Otherwise, they step not, on you. you right, and they'll step you on start you. They'll people. take the piss out of you. Right, but how? So how has that been for you? And do you feel like, because of being a black man, how far you've come, the spaces that you've been able to get into, like BAFTA, being being a part of BAFTA, um, having a voice in BAFTA, what part do you think that's played in this? Everything. In in this. That black man argument is kind of weird because if you're not, if you were, if you were being uncharitable, and if you're really trying to get to the heart of the issue, it could be argued he got away with all that scum shit because he's one of the only black people in that space. And no one wanted to come out and say, hey, you know that guy who's, you know, one of the leading voices of a particular type of genre of movies and films and TV series here in the UK who represents a particular type of people here in this country who are represented in these different sort of areas. You know what? He's a creep. No one wanted to come out and say that. So maybe the fact that he's black and he's very prominent and very popular and very famous and very influential and represent a, you know a certain demographic in the country and there's you know re representation in the country isn't the greatest anyway especially in media the whole post george floyd thing our issues here already with police brutality and whatnot knife crime blah 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 he could probably got away with most of the stuff because he's black but now he's trying to use the because i'm black thing as a reason why he's a dickhead <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the race card, isn't it? You can use it against yourself for yourself, against yourself for yourself. Cool, makes sense. It's downfall, Every I should say. Everything, because actually, what what people don't realize is that I said this in another thing, and, and so someone's gonna be like, "I've heard this already," but I was fighting battles in wars that people didn't even know exist. Do you understand what I mean? I was making, setting precedents, and doing things not for me. Because I'm the one that's hitting the wall, hitting the wall, hitting the wall. And then two years later, someone comes and goes, no, but I want my production company credited. And they go, yeah, you can, you can have that. You know why they can have it? Because right. I did it first and I set the precedent. Do you, Do you understand what I'm that, saying? I, off the back of that,
do you no Clark Vince no Clark Vince is Kanye so in terms of your your question how was it it's been a nightmare it's been it's been constant barriers it's been constant battles it's been constant and this is where you get bullying and difficult it's been times where people have gone yeah we really want to work with you but your companies are not getting credited and you're not getting money but this is we need to circle back we need to circle back to the allegations because that first one i read about that girl doing a naked auditions we need to kind of clarify what happened there like this is yeah. going to be mills and we're going to make your show and the other people like <laughs> yeah 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 and me going no nah, i'm not doing that because you're going to credit my company and all the other people, like all of them, saying to me, no, bruv, we're gonna lose the thing, are you mad? Why you gotta be so difficult? Why you gotta be so this, that and the other? Why you gotta do this? Just take the, f just... and I said, no, cause you guys don't understand. Because actually, every time they just go, we'll give you this, and you man are like, yeah, 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 yeah. You ain't learning anything. Don't give me nothing. Let me be there as well, and us be given. That's how I've always been. And that's where you get the coldness and that's where you get the thing because I'm just not having it. You ain't, you ain't taking something I've created and then going, yeah, so we know you created it, but we'll take ownership and then you'll still get your credit and this, that and the other. I'm like, no, my company's getting credited as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's who I am. I walk onto sets. I walked onto sets of shows and just went like, where's all the black people? Well, no, you know, we've, no, no. I need some black people on this thing. That's how, that's what the stuff I used to do. So you think they liked me? Of course they didn't like me. No, Mandela. Was difficult for them. No, Mandela Club. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what people, what people, that, what people who don't, don't, don't know me is, that's my demeanor, that's who I was. But actually I was fighting battles that people didn't even know about. Because when you do that, most actors wouldn't even do that. But I got to a point where I'm like, no, I'm, I'm in this show, then there's got to be some people on the crew. Two weeks later, there was a... You know my bulletproof set? Two weeks later, it was not a little carnival out of there, innit? <laughs> this guy's a fucking wally. Two weeks later. <laughs> Two weeks later, it was Brixton up in this thing. Looked like Wakanda. We walked around for two weeks saying Wakanda forever. Everyone was cracking up and then we thought we better chill it down because certain people were getting annoyed, but... Our thing was so inclusive Yuck. because that is, that is how, and I'm talking women, I'm talking people of colour, that, because that is how I was rolling. So when this thing hit me, I was like, apart from the devastation, I was like, huh? How did you feel when you read the article? I can't even describe it. I want to say sick. Sick doesn't describe it. Sick doesn't describe it. It was just, I'm looking at this thing and I'm like... Did you know that, you must have, so did you know the article was coming out? Yes and no. So what they do is, and, and my understanding is when a paper's done something like this, they'll con they contact you right. and they give you like a couple of weeks to, they go, this is what we got on you. You've got two weeks to come back with your things or we're printing this. Right. To, generally, people get two weeks, so a, a week minimum if they're, you know what they gave me? 24 hours. I wonder why. So when you did your BAFTA speech, because a lot of people... When that came out, there was like a lot of conversation about, oh, he knew it was coming. That's why in his BAFTA speech, he's alluded to certain things and he looked, you, he looked like he was worried. Like all I did things. look like I was, I was yeah. worried. So, so, you knew, but, so when you accepted that BAFTA, you knew this was coming? Yes and no. Okay, go on. So the newspaper at that point wasn't, the newspaper at that point wasn't a thing as far as I knew. Okay. It was not a thing as far as I knew. But what I did know was that people had been sending emails. Because how this started was, when I got announced for the award on the 29th, right? The, 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 everyone was positive and this, that and the other. And then uh, of March, 29th of March, it was a Friday. Forget the date, it was a Friday, it was a Friday. Mm -hmm. Everyone was like, oh yeah, you know what? Boy, even people were like, you know what? I don't like man, but he's, he's grafted. Right. On the Monday, Email comes in going, nah, he shouldn't get it. He's he's a this, he's that, he's this, he's that, he's this, he's that. So before that, you had to say the words, say the I've words. I've never had a complaint in my life. Right, season. okay. So then when you got the the nomination was announced and then this happened basically I've, straight after. Zizi, 
and I, I wish I wish we could get all my agents on the phone, all my PRs, all my formers, because they all left me. I wish we could get all them people. <laughs> I wish you could go back to when I worked in the gym and the swimming pool. And all. I've been around women my whole life, right? I've not ever no complaint. But then some people will say just because you haven't had any complaints doesn't mean it's not true. Because it could be that the women people are scared to come forward or they're because they're, I'm yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Mm, so people yeah. say like because even I would say that I you know it doesn't mean because no one's ever come before before that it's, it's not true. That's a that's a valid point. So so for me it's more. But then how do you? That's a valid point, and I, I and I hear that and I accept it. But then how do you combat stuff like this? Because actually, you know, for me that means everything. So I, what, I still speak to all my ex girlfriends. So what do you think the <laughs> the process? <laughs> I still speak to all my ex-girlfriends. All right, get 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 one of them on camera to, on record. I dare you. <laughs> hey, yo, big up. Um, I just see my email. Big up. Um, G had for the cash app, my friend. I appreciate you. It didn't come up on here because it's not linked on here. But big up G had for the cash app. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. There should be because for me, I th I understand why we've got to this point in society where whatever a woman says, we have to believe it. End of. Because historically, we've not been taken. Seriously, yep. when we've reported crimes of sexual assault, rape, whatever, it's, the percentage is extremely low. Yep. So I understand why we've got to this point. My worry is, is that I think that there's not enough procedures around it. So in your, in your, in this situation, what would, what do you think is the correct procedure? Okay, so this is an interesting point, right? Because I kind of agree. There's not enough due process. Um. It's mostly a judicial thing because just in general, you know, you look at some of the rape cases and whatnot, or just cases in general. Look at what's happening with recently, just in the news, poor example, but what's happened with Taxstone? Taxstone's been convicted only recently of Mansell and he still hasn't been convicted yet. Tory Lanez just recently went to prison now and he still hasn't been convicted yet. Cases that involve just, you know, what you deem to be assault with a weapon and stuff takes so long to get done, let alone stuff that's sexual or abusive in nature it's just really really difficult to kind of get to the bottom of it for whatever reason it just takes long to get to get you know to get done so that's the main problem that kind of kind of comes at the heart of it but i also think in general i think societal societally there is an issue in that for whatever reason if a guy does get accused of something like this all of your positions jobs opportunities get taken away from you despite you not being kind of convicted yet in a court of law for what you've done. But the issue comes, I think, the issue is, the sneaky issue here is that some of the things that you can get accused of by people aren't necessarily a crime or something that you could be charged for. Maybe they're because they've been done so long ago and because a person isn't willing to, you know, go, write a report for it or anything or so that way, shape or form. So it then becomes a thing of like, Imagine you abuse somebody. Imagine you're a guy that's abused people in the past, women, but nothing that you've done is is kind of um, nothing that you've done would warrant you being put in prison because no one's willing to kind of go on the record and say you did what you did, even though they they're saying it. You know, maybe the interview on a podcast they're not willing to go the extra step to report it to the police. Does that mean you shouldn't be punished in another way? Because that's what we've got now kind of cancel culture is like a way to kind of punish people if they can't be punished in the court of law so that you say hey you did this scum that fucked up shit we can't prove it without doubt but we have enough evidence so far that we can kind of go off them from accounts from other people and maybe what we think of you as a person so now we're going to take away the things from you societally that you kind of you know resp you know want like recognition respect um you know jobs position whatever it may be they take that away from you so you're you're free to live your, your everyday life but the things that you kind of worked hard for in that kind of society or that kind of industry are now be take away from you that's the kind of way to sort of you know have some sort of like you know um it's 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 a form of punitive damages not really but it's kind of but it gets a little bit sketchy when people then use it as an opportunity to take people down that they don't like i know that can happen but is that really a case though like how many occasions have there been of people really filing or going out there and saying stuff about people to this level 20 women all individuals in a calculated coordinated attempt to take somebody down is no clock really that big of a person to do that for really i'm not too sure 
I doubt it personally. And I think the way he's defending himself, for me, screams somebody that would do what he's been accused of. But I kind of get where it can get a little bit sketchy a little bit. It kind of can get a bit sketchy. In this situation, the correct procedure would have been to go to the police. So this is another thing, right? What do you want me to say? So what? This is another thing that people, I, yeah. that w when I've done my research and whatnot, yeah. there's never been any, you've never been uh, pulled in for questioning. No. Nothing. No. You've never been um, charged with no. anything. They've never even said... We'd come like down for a cup of tea. No. Come down for nothing. No. None of these. No. Also, none of these allegations that were put into the Guardian, none of these women have gone to formally no. uh, report any no. of these things. No. Um, and since this has all come out, I know they've kind of worded it as you've been acquitted or the it's been dropped. Dropped due to but, like a... But it that's would, not true. For it to be dropped, it would have had to be picked up and it was never picked up. It was up never in picked the first up. Place. So for me, that is what I find facts. quite worrying. It's odd. Is that all of these things can happen. Like they can come forward. And again, I'm not saying they're lying or they're not. But where is the process to make sure that... Well, ask me this question. I just saw... Excuse me. I don't know when you're putting this out. But I just saw that at the end of beginning of March, a big soap, big soap star says it. Big soap star was arrested for rape. Mm -hmm. Big soap star. It says top soap star. I read it all last night. Pure articles. Top soap star arrested for rape. Male in their twenties raped someone on New Year's or around New Year's. They ain't being named. So do you think Why have they not been named? So maybe that's that that's really an interesting point. So maybe there should be there should be a space. The the fact of the matter is, if that if you're being accused of something, you end up risk you're basically got um you lose more just from being accused of, even if you didn't do what they accused you of doing. So maybe we need to reach a point in society where if you accuse somebody of doing something, you have just as much to lose as a person you're accusing. Maybe that's the way to go about it because that's the only way you can make it somewhat fair in a court of public opinion. So that if that person gets everything taken away from them, they get BAFTA's gone, company goes insolvent, companies pull away, the same thing happens to you. So you're kind of both in this sort of like societal escrow until everything's been settled and then it can kind of go back to normal. But it feels like the balance, it feels like in some respects, the balance of power gets shifted. So if you believe in that shit, so if you're no clerk and you've got that power in that in that industry where you can kind of call the shots and you're the big wig that walks on the stage or walks into production things doesn't care who people are and flexes your shoulders you can maybe put people in positions where they feel uncomfortable but then once they accuse you the shift the, the power shifts on their side where they can essentially um d kind of do as they please with your reputation with your name and your likeness and you don't really have any kind of like way to kind of fight back against those allegations because it's always going to sound and look a bit gross if you come out and attack them for their integrity and for what they're saying and whatnot. It can get a bit dodgy and whatnot, wherever it may be. But again, 20 individual people is very difficult to sit here and say they all coordinated um, their accounts in, in order to kind of bring you down on one of your biggest days of your career type of thing. It just feels a bit weird to me personally. Maybe the Guardian did what they did in the scumbag way to kind of bring you down a notch because they weren't fans of you. I can understand that. But to get all those women to put those stories together is one thing. And also the defense of that, they didn't report it to the police. I don't know, reporting it to the police isn't as easy and as simple as people are making it seem to be. I'm, I'm sure that's quite traumatic. And what's that word called? Yeah, I'm sure it's just not a fun experience to go and report stuff like that to the police after the fact. You know, them questioning whether or not it happened to you, having to relive that trauma that you probably buried and shit. It's not the most easiest thing to do, I would imagine. So the, the fact that they didn't report it isn't really the most encouraging thing in the world, but I don't know. So do you think it's... They were arrested. Arrested know. for rape. It's all in the papers. Anyone who's watching this can go Google it. Soap star arrested for rape. Why have they not been named? I was my name my name was dragged. I've not even been spoken to by the police. So I by from my understanding, you have gone to the police. Yeah. So okay. to answer your last question, the process for me would either be go to the police, mm -hmm. go to Time's Up, because that's what Time's Up are there for. If you thought to yourself it's not a police thing, that's what Time's Up's there for. That's what it was built for. The Me Too era in 2017 was was 
was long overdue, <laughs> well deserved for women. This guy's this going to me too. This. this is stuff I believed anyway. Mm -hmm. People don't know me, right? He's going to um, me too. Oh my, my God. My name was not mentioned once in that era. <laughs> so the process is go to the police, He's a right? If you don't believe that it's criminal, go to Time's Up, right? Go to my, go to my agents, go to my PR. Well, there's many, there's there was, many. There was one of the ladies did say that she spoke to your PR. The... And the PR said she was lying. Okay. And I know, and she was lying because she's a liar, but that's a different story. Um, but there's, my point is to your question. Your PR who you pay told an accuser that she was lying. That's the defense. There's a process. There's a process and you can go to those people and you don't have to be named. What you don't do is wait till a man gets nominated for a career achievement and go to a newspaper. So what do you, what, what do you... So when is the perfect time to raise, to raise this then? What are you talking about then? Should they wait until after when you don't have any gigs going on, then they report it? Like, what, what is this defence? What do you think um, is the reason behind this? Who was to you? Someone that uh, collaborated with us for and a few years. And you worked with her a lot? Yeah, she collaborated with us for a few years, yeah. So would you say she was, you were close and you were friends? Would you yeah. say she, you were yeah. friends? Yeah, so she she's like around one of, my children and everything. So she was like one of, she's a pivotal point in the Guardian article. What would be the reason why <laughs> would now decide, I don't like Noel after being around your family, your kids and whatnot, and say, I don't like this man and I'm going to make up all these things against him and throw him underneath the bus? Well, I can't really talk, I can't really... As you know, there's, there's legal things going on. And to, to your point, not me getting looked at, but me trying to sue a, a newspaper. And the fact that I went to the police, there's stuff happening there. So I, I don't really want to talk ab about her like that. Um, wow, he's but but I, what, what I will say is, I'll go back to your point about, what I will say is, sometimes you fall out with people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can be close with people, you can be tight with them, and then you fall out. That's, that's, that can happen in life. And sometimes that happens in life. And then when that does happen, either people don't chat again, or they do chat, or sometimes there's a bunch of people that don't like you, and you keep succeeding, and then there's opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And do, do you know what I mean? Like, I, there's certain things I can't, I can't say, obviously. I don't, want to put my, I don't want to put myself in man's shoes because this is just gross and horrible stuff. But a part of me thinks if ever you're accused of something like this, right? I'm never going to... There's never going to be the defense of like, my lawyers are dealing with this as a quarter thing. You have to come out all guns blazing. If you legitimately know in your heart of hearts that you didn't do what somebody is tell saying you did, it's different if it's like an interpretation because I think there's a part of me that would be like, you know what, if somebody received something that I did with not the bad intention in a bad way, then you have to kind of hold your hands up because you can't, you can't tell somebody how to receive what you did. You can't, yeah, you can't, you can't tell somebody how to interpret something that you did and to receive in a bad way. So if they did receive in a bad way, maybe you should hold your hands up and be like, you know what? Even though I didn't intend it to be looked at that way, I do apologize. You should be able to as a guy or as anybody, as a human being. But if you didn't do anything that they said that you accused you of doing, you should be really laying it bare and saying, We're, we can, like, this interview should have been him saying, hey, every account in that Guardian article, I'm willing to sit here and dispute every single story. And I'm going to start from the first one. And go through every look i'm not gonna go to any detail but i'm gonna refute some key parts of this story and be like hey this person said this i didn't talk to them about this until then you know what I mean? lay it out and kind of go through everything in detail then people can make up their own opinion about it but sitting here and just saying they're lying they're lying they're lying and having no real counter to what they've said proper evidence or anything feels a bit weird man it feels strange and this is a defense especially when you're fighting for your life fighting for your career for the future of your family of your kids and shit you should be willing to do more than just like oh i'm dealing with the courts and suing this suing that it's like suing a paper good luck the paper is just reporting on what the women report what, what it's basically share they're not that liable. It's not, I don't think he's going to get that far with the paper, personally, for me. If he does, fair enough, but I don't think he will. It just feels a little bit sussy, man. It feels a little bit suspect. But 
But, and as I said, as I said earlier, not everything is, not everything is a lie. There's context to some so, things. So what's not a lie? So for example, there was a woman that said that at work I told her her mum was nice. Right. I did. <laughs> and do you feel that... <laughs> <laughs> you got a wife she works underneath you and you're telling her her bummy looks nice I love how he doesn't understand that that's not a good thing <laughs> this isn't this isn't an episode of Mad Men you just go around like slapping girls on the bum while they're trying to get their papers out of the fucking photocopy machine <laughs> the bum was nice what am I to do? Am I going to lie? Am I going to lie? If I see someone give a bum nice, am I going to lie and say it's not nice? <laughs> He's a fucking psycho. No, Clark is a fucking psycho. I saw him alive. That is wrong to do that. In, in 2023, <laughs> in 2023, in the way the world has changed, of course. In what? No, bruh. In 1998, that's wrong. In 2001, that's wrong. In 2005, that's wrong. In 2023. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, that saying of like, what happens in the dark will always come to light is true, man. In 2016, it may have been wrong, but... Yeah, big up Mr. Singh. Wild go on, wild go on. Big up Mr. Singh. At, at the time, I was just... It, it, I, didn't feel like, I didn't feel like I was like, yo. It was just like, oh, man, you got a night. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I say somebody I like your jacket <laughs> Oh I like how you did your hair When you get that done I like your nails Oh you got a really nice bum <laughs> Excuse me <laughs> oh. There's no real way There's no real way Of complimenting A woman who isn't somebody you're trying to romantically pursue or sexually pursue without it coming across creepy. There is no way of doing it, really. Unless maybe you look, unless you're somebody that the person's interested in. Maybe that's the way it changes, right? If, the, if they kind of, but even then, yeah, there's no way of it not being received creepy. It's just impossible to do so. And I know myself having kind of made jokes that I felt would be quite funny and it's not landed. And it's like, it's hard as like a colleague and colleague, as like on the same level to make that kind of joke and make it make, make it funny sometimes. People don't interpret it the right, or the way that you intended it, it, to become, it to come across. Let alone someone that's like a boss and a superior. That's like, you can't do that. You just cannot do that in any way, shape or form. You just have to kind of, I don't know. It's just a bizarre defense to have in 2023. It's like, uh, brother, that doesn't work. You could, you can make a little joke to somebody in a bar like a bartender and it could be received as wrong and you could have a, a drink thrown in your face let alone someone you're working with it's like what and when and when you said this to her what was her response she told me off and then what did you do apologize okay so <laughs> apologize I, I i have to this is your what you're telling me this is a conversation again and this is the reason why i wanted to do this interview it's in the article it says i apologize because she said i, I apologize I, and i think so like why are you in the paper Right, so this is my, con my another con why I wanted to have this conversation because I think there has to be a conversation around harassment mm -hmm. and the word harassment. What, like, to you as a man in twenty, like in twenty twenty three, what does harassment mean to you? Well, I've I've looked up the definition now, and if if I look if I stare at you too long now, that's harassment, right? right? But for me, you, I I think it's not about the word harassment. I think we have to look at intent. Breaking down harassment. It's just, I think that's when you know you've lost a plot. When you're able to sit there and try and break down what is harassment and what isn't harassment. Like, God almighty, bro. I've always said, the moment you engage somebody in those kind of conversations, because you said already, oh, why is she going in the paper if I already apologize? Unfortunately, you said what you said. They can say whatever they want now because it's like a, it's like a, what do you call it? What is that BGL says? Mutual combat. <laughs> You got into like a mutual conversation. Like you've kind of invited them into this convert. Like, no, sorry, they're part of your conversation. Or they're part of your story. So they can say whatever they want because two people are in this conversation. So this idea that she 
shouldn't say anything anymore because you apologize is nonsense it's like who who are you to control how that person interprets what you said and you know whether or not they repeat that story again it's really bizarre where you're defending himself like honestly but what is harassment the definition of harassment webster dictionary definition is fucking insane level of a defense i think we have to look at kind of the people that are kind of going yo 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 and the people that might just say an odd comment and not understand their actions have a harm not understand that their actions harm people because when i said that i wasn't like Rawr. I was saying, Ward, she's got a nice bum. <laughs> Let's pause that. When I said that, I wasn't like, Rawr. I was saying, Ward. <laughs> he has kids and a wife at home, and he's saying, Woo, to some what? Woman that's working with him or something. Oh. <laughs> what a great way to kind of, you know. Um, cultivate a really warm uh safe workplace right when your boss is going woo as you're walking past like are you seeing this this isn't this like a category definition of what a sex pest is trying to excuse this nonsense where's my hug at oh she's got a nice bum so i said that and she told me off and i was like i'm so sorry right and then you have to what are you sorry about then if you didn't say anything bad if you went oh <laughs> Look at Cece's face. <laughs> Check yourself and go, ooh, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have said that. But that that does not make you a sexual predator. Do you know what I mean? Uh do you get to define if you're a sexual predator or not? I don't think so, bruh. If a girl's if there's 20 girls saying you're a sexual predator, unfortunately, you're a sexual predator. It's like being a low cow. You don't get to tell people when you're not a low cow. You're a low cow when you're a low cow. I'm sorry, brother. You don't get to just <laughs> I don't think I'm a sexual predator. 20 women will beg to differ. I'm saying, me me telling someone off for okay. I think I was trying to find my words be careful here because i'm a woman i don't want to look like i'm but i would i would say that for me i think we have to as a society be a bit more i think it's unfair to just call say somebody is harassing you from one comment, one comment. Mm -hmm. i think and I, I don't know how this is gonna to come out but i think even as a woman I think for me, I wouldn't class somebody harassing me if they made one comment. My, I would decide if somebody was harassing me after I told them I felt uncomfortable, and what they, they do after that. So 100%. if I say, well, that may- So you can't harass somebody once, but then you can't call someone sexual, sexual, what? How does that make any sense? So you can harass somebody one time and that's called harassment. But then if you only do it once, you can't be called a harasser. <laughs> what <laughs> if you did it once that's harassment it's like getting into a fight because you got into one fight doesn't make you a fighter but you did get into that fight <laughs> what <laughs> isn't it just easy just not to harass in the first place should that just be the the, 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 the thing to begin with <laughs> Honestly, this is really interesting conversation. The semantics of trying to defend people is weird here. Make me feel uncomfortable, <laughs> and then you go, "What? Your bum looks nice, though. I'm telling you, your bum looks nice." <laughs> then I would be like, "Yeah, you've gone too far. You're harassing <laughs> yeah. me because I've told you that I don't yeah. like that." But if you say to me, "Sorry, I apologize. Yeah. My bad." Yes, it was inappropriate. I've now told you. 100%. However, you act after that is what I would decide. Is Man, big up Zizi though. To be fair, because this position that she's holding as a woman in society right now, she must be getting it from everybody right now because she essentially is trying to. Um, she's trying to <laughs> argue the other side, and women are not going to take. They're not going to take kindly to this on social media. I'm. I'm assuming her mentions must be crazy right now because i get what she's trying to say but the optics of this look insane <laughs> it really does but big up her for trying to be somewhat objective to this but jesus christ the optics look crazy
development or not. So let me tell you something. On God, yeah? On God. I've never in believe, my life... We don't believe you. I don't give a fuck what they say. They can come... I've you. never in my life had no. a conversation with a woman where I've made a comment like that and she's told me, excuse me, and I've carried on. But then, ne never. But then some people might say, why are you even saying that in the first place? Because you know what? Well, I'm a grown adult. They're grown adults. And sometimes in, in, sometimes in environments you're in, people have those... Con Let's not pretend people don't have those conversations. You think that in your head. You think that in your head. You think that in your head. It just doesn't come out well. Like, I, honestly, we've all done it before. All guys have kind of made a comment, maybe even not trying to be sexual, just trying to, I don't know, be funny. And it doesn't come out well. And you get burned once. And you see that look of horror and terror in someone's eyes as they're looking at you thinking, ugh. And you think, you know what? I'm not going to do that again. And that's sometimes with people that you know. Let alone people that you don't know. Like, I don't know what this guy's arguing. He's arguing for the right to be a pest. <laughs> that's what he's arguing for it's like brother you can say what you want but when people interpret it in a certain way you maybe should you know calibrate what you say based on how people maybe respond to what you're doing especially when it become when it comes to women you want to make them feel comfortable in this space no i don't know what a bizarre man yeah people have those conversations when we were i mean i'm older than you but when we were growing up everyone's heard of whether you worked in a in a in a, in a business or not everyone's heard of office work parties do you know what I mean? Office Christmas party. Oh, Sarah was photocopying her things on the on the photocopier. Oh, Bob <laughs> What? <laughs> was kissing Janet in the cupboard. Oh, everyone knows about like we all know about these stories, do you know what I mean? Whether you worked in an office or a corporate thing or not, right? What's this, what's this? Adults have conversations that they sometimes shouldn't have, whether they're single, married, or whatever. What? If the world was the way that we that people pretend it is, there would be no affairs, there would be no uh uh, one night stands. There would be. There would be. Not, the, the world is the world. People flirt. People talk. And so. And so they should. But there needs to be lines, right? And actually, we need to differentiate between men that don't care about the lines and men that cross the lines unintentionally. So how many times can you cross the line unintentionally? Well, yeah, like, yeah, it depends exactly. on who you're around. I'm not talking about <clears throat> grabbing people up, but like you might be a group of like, for example. You know, saying that to that girl, she says that to me. I say, sorry, I never did it again. But then did you, would you then think it's okay to say it to another woman, even though that woman has told you no? It depends on the conversation. If but I was I, having I, a con... <laughs> case by case, sexual abuse is fucking wild. <laughs> case specific sexual abuse and harassment is absolutely insane. Like... <laughs> Psychotic. Conversation of another woman, and she said to me, "Oh boy, I like your chest, or you, you got you, you got a nice bum." Why wouldn't I say you got a nice? You, you might, you might. I can't lie to you. You might say that. Mm -hmm. You, as a human being, you might say that. But what I'm saying to you, and what I would need, what I don't need people to understand. I don't care if they understand because this is fact. Yeah, you do care. Why would you go on the show if you didn't care? Is that like, I've never been in a conversation where. I've been making uh, uh, comments like that where it was not reciprocal and not mutual. Where, if, if I'm inappropriate, they were inappropriate too. Because I've never been in that conversation. Apart from that one time? With the bum? Or did, was there some... Well, that wasn't really a conversation. Oh, that right. was completely my fault. Okay, cool. That was completely my fault. And I can own that. But I, I owned it back then. So then what else? Because you said the bum and then the, the comments. And then, um, so what are the other things that you can say, yeah, I put my hands up, that was wrong of me? I mean, as I said, there's, there's context. It's like, I, I can't... I'll tell you one thing that I did find quite weird was the whole dick pic thing. Mm -hmm. um, when in the article, you kind of said you couldn't recall mm -hmm. if you sent the dick pic. Yeah. And I'm telling you. The way this guy thinks is mental. <laughs> Thank you, Angel. Angel, thank you for the tender donation. <laughs> Not, 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 not recalling dick pics, but also recalling when you did say something. And the, I love when guys do this when they rec they can recall the minutia of certain things, but then certain things they don't recall at all. If you can recall when you said sorry about this and when you did that bum comment and that, but you can't recall a dick pic, I think you're lying. I'm sorry. How can a guy not remember who sent a dick pic to? Like this is unless he's saying somebody fucking hacked his iCloud account or something. This is just impossible. Impossible.
Oh my god. Oh, big up Angel though. Thank you for the ten dollar donation, brother. Any times I've sent anyone a little bit of a saucy pic, I know that so you, shit went out. So you send unsolicited pictures? Have you if sent I it? was going to do it, I know <laughs> that I, I was sent that, it, okay? If I was. Yeah. If I was going to send it, and I have, but also... Uh, I, think, I have, I have. But also, I probably have, and I definitely have, because I've... Listen, I've sent videos, I've sent whatever. However... You sent it, videos too? Yeah, sometimes you just... Anyway, let's not... Why is no... Is no clock getting turned on? Like, what's going on with you? Why is he... Is he trying to flirt? You're being accused of sex. He's just really horny, isn't it? Is that what we're seeing here? He's just really horny. Never turns it off. He's that type of guy, isn't it? Where my hug at? Always placing his hand at the bottom of your back and all that if you're a lady, right? Unnecessarily getting on close and stuff, putting his arms around your shoulders and what? Rubbing his hand past your back when you walk by. Saying to you, you should wear that thing you wore last week. God damn. This is not the time for that. But I have, I have, yeah. Okay, but that cool. person has either requested it or... Exactly, Kona. Don't go skiing with no clock. <laughs> he may fall on top of you by accident. <laughs> right. Right. They've right. ever requested it. So my thing with that... Right. One second. When I saw that, when I saw that bit in the article, it was like, how can you not remember sending your thing to somebody? And that's what for me was very questionable because you see me, if I've done something, I'm saying straight out the gate, no, that never happened. Right. So when I read that and I was like, mm, that's a bit dodgy. How can you not know? Okay, so there's things I can't say, but let me tell you something. I'm going to say one thing. Do you understand though when you say this, when we say there's things you can't say, people are going to assume that it's because... No, it's because it is literally because there's, there's legal things happening. Right. But what I will say this, I've never in my life sent anything that people did not want to see, ever. I put that on, I put that on anything that anybody wants. I've never sent anything that, any, if I've ever sent anything in my life, it's been requested. So, but in the, she says that it was just, came from nowhere. No chance. <laughs> and so can you? Oh, look, a message from No Clark. Oh shit, oh shit, fucking hell. <laughs> you, you just are the type of person that will send you a flaccid one as well, you know what I mean? Just, yeah, have some of that. Softy. I love how there's, like, no acknowledgement of, like, the embarrassment that must have caused to his partner or whatnot. Whoever he's... Because I swear he's married. This is just, like... He's talking like he's just a lad on town who got caught sending too many DMs or something. Like, I don't know. This is so bizarre. <laughs> uh, I mean, the wife is loving this, isn't it? The kids are loving this also, man. Great, great example. Explain what that was. I can say that that whole situation was more about adults having conversations than anybody doing anything that was unsolicited. That's all I can say. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would never send anything. Under, I wouldn't do it. So you were saying it, it was the nature of the conversation. It I, was... would, I wouldn't send anything unsolicited. Okay. So I believe you. In the, in the, in the article as well, they, people refer to you as a sex addict and they said that you know you're constantly like you went for he's dinner. proud he's proud of it look he's actually proud of that one thing no with one of the cars she you wanted to take her upstairs and she said no you was like don't tell anyone all these things mm -hmm. so wh Jesus where Christ. where do where does that come from not saying it's true or whatever but where do people get that idea from i feel like i feel like i'm a person that <laughs> Nervous I do get war. into these conversations. Like I do get into these conversations. I don't, I don't instigate them, but I don't, I, I don't shy away from conversations like that. If the topic comes up, then I'm a person that will talk about it, and that that's, that's 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 kind of who I've been. Like I don't, you know what I mean? Like, but sex I, I wouldn't addict. I mean, being a sex addict, ain't a, I'm not a sex addict, by the way, but being a sex addict ain't a crime. And do you think that's what some people at the moment is? A bit, is in, is confusing is that people are kind of getting things mixed up that are crimes with things that are just they don't like if that makes sense well it, and 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 per your earlier comment it's like when you are when you are as a person not liked it's easy to believe a narrative that is that is put out there because it's like yeah that makes sense because he's always a bit mm, i've always found him a little bit this i've always found him a bit arrogant i've always found him a bit 
So, so it's easy to believe those things. And, and I, 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 I'm not saying I'm not that. For me, and I said this as something else, so forgive me if it's repeated, you know, for me, arrogance is a label that people put on you when they cannot deal with your confidence, right? Because if, <laughs> if someone's your best friend and you're as confident as you are, you're a very confident person from what I've seen. I don't know what happens in your, in your house or whatever, right? If some I want to get in your house. But he doesn't like you, they'll be quick to be like, Zz, 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 this man, Zz, Zz, that. But your best friend wouldn't say that. Your best friend who really got your back would be like, excuse me, she's confident. She Big up, Richie. Why is it not playing? Why is this not playing? Anyway, let me do it one more time. I don't know why the text to speech is not working. Let's replay it and see if it works. Okay, it's not working. Anyway, um, Richie said here, AZ, why is he projecting the interview on her UK Woody Allen, aka Ami Hamid? I don't remember. Just like he said, AZ, sorry, Lane's going in trouble for pussy. Yeah, exactly, man. Like, <clears throat> thank you, Richie, for ten dollar donation, my friend. This is a strange one because I feel like <sighs> he's clearly lying. Right, we know this. He's clearly lying, and I just feel like there's a lack of accountability for the things that he's done that people have not liked, and that they view as sexual harassment. He doesn't want to acknowledge that. That's the thing. That's the issue here because he's trying to basically excuse what he's done and say it's all sex addict stuff. It's like it doesn't matter if it's sex addict stuff if it's part of your religion, if it's something that you always do on Mondays or Thursdays. People received it the way they received it. You should be remorseful. You should be um, acknowledging. You should be acknowledging their pain and their just feelings in general, and trying to make amends. If you do want to have some forgiveness from the court of public opinion, so you can live your life, because clearly that's important in this regard. But he's just trying to fight it from the avenue of like, this is how I am as a person. People are misinterpreting my intentions. It wasn't done with any malice. I can, but you just can't go around just saying somebody's got a good bum at your workplace. It just doesn't work out that way. Even if it's someone that you're trying to date, you have to kind of calibrate what you say based on how they're feeling and what they're about, where you stand in that relationship. It just doesn't, you just don't get to say what you want with no consequence or stuff. It's just bizarre overall. Um, I don't know. What is it? Yeah, he's making Twitch the Jingle Bell song and sending it to everybody at work. Exactly, Koyla. He really does seem like the type of cornball to something like, yeah, he's just, he's an odd, odd, strange guy. Like, even the sex addict angle is like, what? Sex addict? Okay. Still doesn't excuse what he did. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. He knows what she wants. People that know me be like, this guy is on it. When I mean I'm on it, like I, I get up like 5.50, I go gym, I come back, I'm on it. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to make any friends. And this is where the coldness comes from. I'm not trying to make any friends. Nobody's better than me. Nobody's better than me. That's my opinion. And the facts are the facts. If you look at my achievement, the facts are the facts. Now, where people think that is arrogant because people think I think I'm better than people. I don't. I've never in my life thought I'm better than anybody. Like legitimately, I don't think I'm better than no one. I eat, sleep and go toilet just like everybody else is. I wake up and I go, rah man, I ain't lost enough weight or how come my pecs aren't big? Like, so I, I have the same flaws as everybody, right? I don't think I'm better than anyone, but you ain't better than me. And I project that. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And pecs, so people, bums, people fats. don't like it because people have their own issues and their own confidence. And when they walk into a room like, hi, hi, and I'm happy to be there, I walk into a room like, you lucky to have me here. That's arrogant to people, but to me, it's, be it's belief. You cannot sit here and do this job and not think you want to be number <laughs> one. If you don't want to be the best female podcaster, scratch that. If you don't want to be the best, don't edit it out, but scratch that. If you don't want to be the... Cringe. Cringe. The best post podcaster in this country, what are you doing it for? Mm. Why are you doing it? So you have to believe that. <laughs> so He's trying to give her a motivational talk in the middle of him fighting for his life. 
<laughs> this is worse than the R. Kelly fucking Girl King interview, mate. What the fuck is this? Do you feel like all the things that you've accomplished and what you've done for the culture? Because again, whether or not... Exactly, Logos. I'm not better than you, but you're lucky to have me right here right now. But I'm not arrogant. I've seen you and you're warm. I understand what you've done and what the... You're the only one. And, and like, the, because, no, because before kid adulthood, before adulthood, there was, we didn't have films no, like that. There wasn't didn't. anything like that. So do you feel, do you feel, how do you, what's your feeling towards the industry and how they've handled this situation with you, people that you know? Um, I, I, how, how, what, how's that been for you? I think it's disgraceful. But the, the ironic thing is, the ironic thing is this, is like, if this happened to anybody else, it would be me that would be making noise about it. They have to kill the bravest ones because it's the bravest ones that are the ones that, <laughs> are the, I'm a disruptor. I'm a disruptor. Mm -hmm. Like the stuff that I achieved, I'm not supposed to, I'm, I'm not supposed to have achieved that, right? Mm -hmm. And. You know, <laughs> nobody else is walking on. Well, maybe now, but other people weren't walking on set. Be like, where's the people of color? Other people weren't turning down meals because they wanted their co-star to be in the show. I've mm -hmm. said this. People have seen this article like before. Mm -hmm. When when we were trying to set up Bulletproof, I was told to my face by execs, one of you has to be white. If you can remove your co-star, we'll make this for you. We can make this show for you. I was told that to my face. The person that told me that now runs a studio. Can you believe that? The person that told me black people won't work. One of you has to be white. They now run a studio. I'm not gonna out them. I'm not gonna mash up their life or anything like that. But you believe that they now run a studio. So imagine the decisions they're making now, right? Mm. Black people don't sell. Anyway, I was told to <laughs> remove my co-star and then- I... Who check God sends his horniest battles to his strongest sort? <laughs> Said no. There were meals on the table, Zizi. Meals. Not literally, but like, I could have made that show with like Lethal Weapon. So how did it feel then when your co-star came out? And I love him. I'm not, I'm not bad-mouthing him. I love him. But how did that feel though? I'm not bad-mouthing him. I love the guy. It's my guy. Fair enough. Like, we've been through, we've been in this business for 18 years. Like, and, and, do you know what I mean? So. Do you understand it? Do you understand why people have to do things? Well, I'm not. I love the guy. I'm not saying that. I'm not. Fair enough. Let's talk about um, Adam Deacon because I think your face. I don't know if they. They probably did. They would have like. He doesn't want to. But I feel like we have to. Adam Deacon. Um, what What is that? Because I feel like. I've heard things from Adam. I've heard things. Um, no one's a, heard. No one's heard from me. No, I've, yeah, I've not heard. But I've heard things. Maybe you know around the thing. You can read articles. You can see that there's been restraining orders and all those type of things. What What is that with Adam Deacon? Because obviously you guys worked together. You were close at one point. Um, what What happened there? And do you feel like? He there's he has a part to maybe play in. Do I feel? Yeah, like do you, do you, is there you know? Hmm. I don't feel. Um, you must feel something because you're always horny, brother. You must feel. <laughs> Let me just say this. This narrative that you've been fed, that everybody's been fed. Just for context, he's basically come out publicly f loads of times and said, you know, that you, you bullied him. His whole you stopped career. You, you stopped I his blocked career him. and all yeah, these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. This narrative that, that people have been fed for the last 10 years and I've never spoken about, ironically, I spoke about it the other day on something, so <laughs> sorry. Um, I've never spoke about is... Is, is, is bullshit. And the biggest mistake, two mistakes I made, the biggest two mistakes I've made probably in my life was one, not giving all the evidence of the shit he was doing to me at the trial, because I didn't want him to get, I didn't want this guy to get in trouble, but he would not leave me alone. I'm gonna get to that in a second, why? He just would not leave me alone, right? So I only gave enough evidence for them to deal with it. If I had given the evidence that he was threatening the lives of my children, 
and that he was telling people to find my address and, and jack me and, and do more. If I'd given that all in, I mean, it's kind of there. People heard, it, but I didn't give it in, right? It would have been on top. Before that point, from 2003 to, 2000, to 2010, this was my guy, like, this was my guy. I looked after him, I put him in every film, I put him in everything. But where's the book? There was no bullying. There was no bullying. In 2010, he decides he's gonna make his film. Um, gonna make his film. I was helping him with this movie. I was helping the guy with the movie. Mm -hmm. He went and signed a contract with somebody else and cut me out. That's what happened. This is fact, right? At that point, I said to him, we had a conversation. We kind of fell out a bit, but we had a conversation and he said, bro, I got to eat, man. You were taking too long. I said, fine, but you can't call the movie that name if it's not part of our thing, because this, this is my brand. Right. Cool, I'm not going to call it that. Then that's what they call it. That's why we fell out. There was no bullying. There's never been no bullying, ever. That's why we fell out. From 2011 to 2014, I didn't speak to the guy. There's no bullying. So that's from 2003 now to 2014. There's no bullying. Then one day in 2014, boom, he comes out. I blocked his career. I'm raising children. I'm running a business. I'm not out there. For sure, I said to people, he ain't working on my shit. That's my prerogative though. Mm. If we've fallen out, why do I need to bring you onto my projects? But if you think I'm out there raising children and running a business and I'm having meetings. But isn't that blocking then? If he says you'd be blocked him because of the opportunity that he got were always on your projects because your projects would cater to the things that he was into or being the area that he wants to act in, isn't that technically blocking? It was easy, like, yeah, it's easy. Nice to meet you. By the way, don't work with... I was never... I've never done that. I've never... All I've, all I've ever wanted is for him to crack on over there. We're falling out. Crack on. Do your thing. Let me do my thing over here. There's been no bullying. Can I say I've been the perfect friend? Probably not, but I'm not the perfect friend to, any, to anyone. Like, no, who's the perfect friend, right? <laughs> now, then we not go to the court. Not the perfect friend, not the perfect dad, not the perfect partner. <laughs> but perfect, what, creative producer director god damn it no this is a car crash he gets convicted so in court they're like well where's all the evidence of the bullying there's nothing so he's convicted of harassment now bear in mind he was harassing me for months and i did nothing it's only when the man threatened the lives of my children only at that point did it escalate only at that point. I tried everything. I tried legal letters. He spoke to me on the phone. I told him he was in the movie. I'll put him in the next movie. I, I got him an agent. When he was doing all this madness to me, I went and got him an agent. So how am I this wicked guy? He's doing all this madness to me. I went and I got him an agent. Mm -hmm. That agent stuck with him, came to him, came. That agent came to court with him against me. The same agent that I got him. But that's the point. This is his, his client, right? Now, this is where you don't, this is what you don't know. He's convicted of harassment, boom, boom. Restraining order, two years. From 2015 to 2017, peace. Right. After the thing runs out, he starts again. Now, this is what people don't know. He starts again, and it continues, and it continues, and it continues. He's doing, he's telling people to come find me. Jack Noel, do this, do that. But I don't say anything. I've got emails from the police 2019, 2020, 2020. But they're like, we'll go get him now. Mm. I've got the emails and I'm saying to them, just leave him. I don't want you to go get him because I understand he has some mental health. Everyone talks about how Noel doesn't care about his mental health. I care more than anyone. Because if he had real friends that cared, he, they wouldn't have let him do it. My friends wouldn't have let me carry on like that. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So, so anyone who's thinking that I don't care, I've had to endure this shit with my family, this torment, and I'm gonna tell you more, I'm gonna, I've had to endure this torment with my family because I did care. Even after everything he did, I cared enough that I didn't want him to get nicked. So I could show you the emails now. I could get my laptop and show you the email now. Police, 2020, we'll go get him today. And me telling them, no, don't go get him. I just need to make you aware of what's happening. When he got kicked off Instagram, blames me again. Of course he got reported because he was doing all kinds of madness. And I'm not talking like minimal madness where you're just like, I'm talking about people telling him to fuck my wife and he's retweeting that shit. <laughs> Bang his wife and put the rubber in the fish tank. <laughs> and he's retweeting that. Then he's screenshotting it and putting it on Instagram. 
as well. So it's going to hundreds of thousands of people. That's why Instagram banned him. It wasn't a case of me reporting. Like, he got people reported him. Where's this pussy hiding? Excuse my language. Where's this pussy hiding? People are telling him, yeah, up in between his mum's legs. He's retweeting this stuff. This isn't 24, this is 2020. This is 2019, 2020. You lot don't know about this because I've enjoyed it. So who's bullying who? So, no. When this thing started happening, this is, this is the modern day get back, isn't it? Instead of reporting to the police and getting him taken off the streets, he reports his account to Instagram and gets his account taken down. <laughs> a guy that's allegedly going to be a threat to his kids, he'd rather get his account get taken down than get the police to go arrest him. Make that make sense. In 2021, certain people started rearing their head again and tweeting things and messaging things like nobody's bulletproof, nobody's unstoppable. One of those messages went out at 12 p.m. on the day I got the call and I got called at 10 past 12. Ooh. I don't give a fuck what anyone, like, I don't feel people were involved, I know people were involved. Before I go to how all of this has affected you, another one- that I've endured this shit. I, I want I, people I, to know, like, I, I've never before... spoken. I've endured this to protect him. All the shit he's done and the whole time if I'm honest with you, right? And sorry, sorry. There's going to be people that say, man, no, I was lying. That everything I'm telling you is fact. Mm. My laptop is right there. I could, get, I could get my laptop and I could show you every receipt for the last 10 years. I have a document which is called 10 Years of Torment. And the police have it. But you don't want me to get that thing. I can get I mean, it right now. I mean, we can get the laptop. I don't want to do that. I won't, I won't do that. I've said enough. <laughs> It's getting that up. It's not gonna get that. <laughs> get that up. I don't wanna get that up. <laughs> Says you got receipts. Don't wanna show them. Okay. Like m the whole point of me saying this is this, right? The point of me saying, and that's not me backing out. I've got it. The whole point of me saying this is this. I've let this narrative go for ten years because I've always thought to myself. Crack on, the guy's got his issues as well. I don't want to exasperate that. I thought that it would sort of die down and it hasn't died down. My missus has had to go through this. My, ki my kids know- You've got a missus? You're, con you're, contemplate you're complimenting your employees' bums, allegedly. Sending unsolicited dick pics, allegedly. <laughs> this guy's a fucking horny menace, man. <laughs> My miss had to enjoy this, bro. <laughs> Fucking hell no. This is R. Kelly levels, I swear to God, man. R. Kelly level. This is R. Kelly on Girl King all over again. Three things. The boogeyman, Satan, and my guy. That's the three things you got to stay away from. Oh, I, don't put, I don't put pictures of my kids. You won't find pictures of my kids on Instagram because of him. So you, you just mentioned your wife, your kids. What has this time been like for you and your family? Because um, I believe that you mentioned in an article one time, after all of this has happened, you was, had suicidal thoughts, you didn't want to be here. What has your mental state been like in the last two years? Because if I'm correct, um, you know, you're no longer you, unstoppable. They, Gone. They, they took that yeah, from took you. It. Yeah, took it. Kicked us out. Took took the company. I got cancelled. I got, I got kicked off shows I created. So also, don't Jason, worry. I'll let you know when the shows are coming out. Jason, they'll, they'll tell Jason you also got t had mm -hmm. to. So so not only have you been affected, your business partner has also been affected. What has that been like for you in the past two years? Because when we spoke, you said you haven't worked. Nothing. No, nothing. So what what's that been like? Horrible. I I, I horrible because. You know, also, these shows went down. These shows went down. So you're they, talking... They also took... Which I Council was Bulletproof. Really... They took Viewpoint... Oh, Council View, Viewpoint was going to go into another season. We'd already started talking about it. So Viewpoint, Bulletproof... They can't... Like about... What I thought was... I, I 300 kind of jobs. 300 jobs on each show. I kind of... Un I understand when they don't continue. But what I thought was really weird is that they took the remaining episodes... Off of, the air. Off the air, which I thought was... Because... So you've got to be going to jail for 100 years. If, if they've done, if they all believe, right, this guy, we're going, we're, he's so this, we're taking the thing off the air, 
You better be going to jail for 100 years, but then you're not getting spoken to. So how did you... What did it's, you been, it's been horrible. What did, you, what did you do? How have you managed to, like... Obviously, because you're still here. How did you manage to come... How did, what, what did you do? Was it your family, therapy? What, what, how did you... Well... Like... We say thoughts. I don't want to diminish anybody that has these sorts of thoughts, right? I wasn't thoughts. I'm like, I'm, I'm out of here. I, would, I knew the day. I was like, we went, we went away. I'm out of here. And it was one of my kids that said something on a day that made me just sort of snap out of it. And then I've had, to, I've had very few people support. More than people would think, but very few people. And even the people that support me, even like the person that was here today, you don't want people to know he's here. Do you know what I'm saying? Not because he ain't he supported me for the last two years, but mm. if I said, oh, it was so-and-so, someone will probably blast him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's been, there's been people, but it's been, it's been minimal, but it's been horrible. Like for the first six months, it was probably like, stay alive. I was having therapy every day. They were calling me every day just to make sure that I was like there. And now, now it's like probably bi-weekly, once a week. And... I don't want anyone to sit there and think I didn't take into account what was said about me, right? I know what's not true. I know what's out of context and I, and I stand on that and I'm going to stand on that, right? I'm telling you because it would be easier for me to just go, but it's easy, please, just, uh, please. It'd be easier for me to do that. I'm not doing it, right? That's who I am. <laughs> but don't think I didn't he hear it and see it and think, right. Did you ever make someone feel certain ways because you talk quite harsh or when you made that joke, and they laughed. Did they laugh because they thought they had to laugh? Like, I've analysed every inter... And there's days I sat there, like, catatonic, like, analysing every interaction I've had with a woman in my whole life, with people in my whole life. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just, you just, you know, I, my kids must have thought I was zombified because I'm just sitting there like that, thinking about... I'm going through my whole life. Well, yeah, when I was 15, I met this person. and I, I, I went... I almost went mad. How hard was it for, how hard was it for your wife? Because I don't want to speak for her because we're in 2023. I don't speak for women. Do you know what I mean? I know, but you, you're, you, you can. <laughs> wife, what are these words? You, it, although you're not speaking for her, you're in the same house as your wife. That's someone that you've been with for, it was terrible. for, for, for how many years? It was and terrible. she knows you. For, well, that's the key point. She's known you for how many years? She knows me. Right. My wife ain't no beaten. My wife runs her own. My wife ain't no beaten woman. Or we don't even have. It, it's difficult. Like I've never. We don't even have route. Like we don't even have rows. I ain't sitting here saying I'm the perfect father, husband, son, friend, or anything like that. But I'm saying like we, like it's it's. She knows me. She knows me. So when she reads that and it's like he said this, she like well yeah I can see you saying that. I'm like well yeah I can. She said to me something the other day. She's like. What people don't know about you is like you're the same with me as without as when I'm not there. Because that was one thing that I did say to you. I was like, so you make these, you made you say, no, I made this comment. But a lot of people will say, and even me, because I'm very territorial. I don't want my man telling any no other woman that their bum looks nice. Yeah. So as a again as a married man, do you think that's okay to be telling another woman while you're married that she's well? Looks the parameters nice? of my marriage are my business, right? right but yeah. what I will say is like. I've been out with my missus, mm -hmm. you know, where we can see someone, I'll be like, hey, that girl's got a nice bum. And she goes, yeah, it is nice. Mm -hmm. Or she's like, oh, that guy's, that guy's, that guy's attractive. And I'm like, which one? This brother here. Let me just get, no, I'm joking. <laughs> but do you know, but, so my point is, is like, context. And this is what she said to me the other day. What people don't know about you is you're, the, you're pretty much the same with me as without me. Obviously, if I'm with my mates, I might, I might say a thing that I might not say if she's there, I'm right, with right, my right. mates. Of course, like, but, and that doesn't make it right or wrong or, you know, maybe you think, oh, I shouldn't, listen. but I'm pretty much, I will be out with her and we'll see someone and, you know, a jogger run past and she'll be like, you see her boobs? I'll be like, yeah. It's not like we're... Well, what about the lads then? <clears throat> what about she says, you see that guy, he's got a big dick, I can see it through his shorts. He's like, yeah, man, it's pretty long, isn't it? Bruh, this is like, this is like T.I. and Tiny, isn't it, all over again, man? Like... They're into, he's into some fuck shit and she's just going to go down with the ship in it and try and excuse it or they're going to both try and to make it make like they're into some kink shit. This is fucking gross, man. 
out there preying right, right, on right. people mm-hmm, together. Mm-hmm. It's just like we're adults. See someone that we that she appreciates or I appreciate or or, or whatever. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm not like, yeah, I saw them and I'm following the woman down the, in the bushes and trying to grope her up and all this stuff. So, I love how his image of sexual harassment is always that, eh, 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 and he's making it seem like he's not that guy, but people look at you like you're that guy, innit? It? So like, <laughs> I love how his interpretation of Pest is always like his gargoyles who are really like sinister. But maybe some people think that what you say is sinister and almost gargoyle like. You can't, you know, tell people how to react to how you act. Or how to interpret what you say or what you do. Very, very weird. And I also find it interesting how all the compliments are coming from him. All the compliments that they all the compliments that they dish out as a couple seem to only be directed towards women. When he mentioned a guy, he said that yeah, he pulled up his sleeves up mocking that he's gonna beat them up. So it's only one way. It only works for him. He can say that girl's got a nice bum, she's got nice tits and stuff, but when his missus says something nice about a dude, he gets immediately insecure. That's a little bit of a red flag. Doesn't mean it's mutual. So this stuff hit me because if I'm honest with you, to your point when you started the thing, being looking the way I do and being where I'm from, because class is a factor as well, yeah? Oh, being where I'm from and looking race, the way I do. Class. I thought I was flying straight. Because I know that they're after us. Right. I know that there's any opportunity to bring someone like me or you or like to, to knock us off our, our pedestal. I know that I've always known that that was a, uh, a thing that happens. Right. Excuse me. Especially when you look like I've always known that. I thought I was flying straight. This which is I, the ironic thing. Which I think is, if I'm looking at it as well, I'm like... That doesn't mean I was perfect. No, but this is what but I'm I saying. Thought I was, as, also, if I look at things, I how about, I know sorry, we are ahead. as... Like you we're saying, as black people, we see we uh, the black men are nine times likely more likely to be stopped by, by the police. We know that in the in the system, um, you are judged more harshly than your more white harshly. counterpart. Hundred percent. So my thing, if I was looking at this as someone from the outside, as I am, my thing is as a black man in the in the system that we are. For me, it's very interesting that you've not been arrested. Right. Because with all the information here, I would at least expect that the police would have been like, hi, no, come, can we have a quick word with come, you, please? Come, let's have a chat. As a, especially as a black man. Right. Class, like you're saying. So what does that tell and you? Whatever. I mean... What does that tell you? It's interesting. That's what I think it tells me. So what I was saying, again, back to that, it is interesting, but was like, I thought I was... <laughs> I know what people have seen. I know what people have read. And again... This is probably the warmest anyone's ever seen me because I, I am detached and I am quite like stand. I've always been like that, right? But I thought I was flying straight. And what I mean by that is I never thought I was perfect and I'm not perfect because even Christians and God-fearing people do things that everyone, their friends are like, yeah? I'm all right, man. I think I'm done with this guy, man. He's, he's, not, he's not giving me the best of vibes. Hey, man. Believe who you want to believe, I guess. But in my head, I think he's lying. I think he did what he's what he's been accused of. He's just fortunate enough that the ladies have given him grace and have not reported anything to the police, which is probably the reason why he's not being pulled into questioning. Or he might just be lucky. But I don't think this is any indication that he's of his innocence, in my personal opinion. The guy's guilty as fuck. He is guilty. It kind of is what it is. Um... <laughs> it just is what it is, isn't it? But yeah, <laughs> I can't. I don't know, man. I can't with these people, man. I can't.